the ugly duckling. In the countryside, the summer sun bathed everything in glory. The cornfields displayed a vibrant yellow, while the oaks stood tall and green. Stacks of hay adorned the lush meadows, and a stork gracefully traversed the landscape on its long red legs, chattering in the exotic tones of Egyptian, the language it had inherited from its devoted mother. Surrounding the fields and meadows were expansive forests, with deep lakes nestled in their midst. It was undeniably splendid in the countryside. Amidst the sunshine, an old farm stood surrounded by deep canals, and towering burdocks grew from the wall down to the water's edge. The burdocks were so immense that even the smallest children could stand beneath the loftiest ones. The wildness of the surroundings rivaled the deepest woods, and there, under a burdock, sat a duck diligently tending to her nest. Though she was tasked with hatching her ducklings, visitors were rare. The other ducks preferred swimming in the canals over gathering under a burdock to chat with her. Finally, one by one, the eggshells burst open with cheerful peep. Peep sounds. Little creatures emerged, quacking and exploring the world under the green leaves. The mother allowed them to look around freely, recognizing the benefits of the greenery for their eyes. How vast the world is, exclaimed the young ones, reveling in the newfound space beyond their eggs. Is this all there is to the world, the mother responded. It stretches far beyond, right into the Parsons field, but I've never been there. I hope you all stay close together. As the ducklings continued to hatch, the mother noticed one egg still intact. Impatient, she pondered, how long will this last? Untruly tired. She sat down again awaiting the last arrival. An old duck, paying a visit, inquired, How's it going? It's taking a long time for that one egg, replied the sitting duck. It refuses to burst. Look at the others, aren't they the prettiest ducklings you've ever seen? They all take after their father. The scoundrel never visits me. Let me see the egg that won't burst, insisted the old visitor. I suspect it's a turkey's egg. I've been deceived that way before, and raising them was a challenge. Turkeys are afraid of water. I couldn't get them to venture in, no matter how much I quacked and clacked. Show me the egg. Yes, that's a turkey's egg. Let it be and teach the other ducklings to swim. I think I'll sit on it a little longer, the duck decided. I've sat for so long already, a few more days won't hurt. As you wish, acquiesced the old duck, departing. Eventually, the stubborn egg cracked open. Peep! Peep! exclaimed the little one as it emerged. It was large and rather unsightly. The duck inspected it critically. It's a very big duckling, she remarked. None of the others look like that. Could it be a turkey chick? Well, We'll soon find out. It must go into the water, even if I have to push it in myself. The next day, with bright sunshine gracing the scene, the mother duck led her family to the canal. 
Splashing into the water, she guided her ducklings, one after another, as they swam adept. Even the awkward, grey duckling managed to keep up. No, it's not a turkey, declared the mother. Look at how well it uses its legs and holds itself straight. It's my own child. On the whole, it's quite pretty if one looks at it rightly. Quack! Quack! Come with me, and I'll lead you into the great world, presenting you in the duckyard. Stay close to me, so no one steps on you, and beware of the cats. They entered the duckyard amidst a commotion, with two families quarreling over an eel's head. The cat eventually claimed the prize, and the mother duck imparted life lessons to her ducklings. She emphasized the importance of manners, instructed them to bow their heads before the grandest duck, and warned them about the cats. In the duckyard, the other ducks observed the newcomers with disdain, criticizing their presence. The awkward duckling was particularly targeted, with one duck attacking and biting its neck. The mother defended it, but the criticism persisted. The old duck with the red rag around her leg acknowledged the beauty of the other ducklings, but expressed regret about the odd one. That one was rather unlucky. I wish she could bear it over again, said the old duck. That cannot be done, my lady, replied the mother duck. It is not pretty, but it has a really good disposition and swims as well as any other, even better. I think it will grow up pretty and become smaller in time. It has spent too long in the egg, and that's why it's not properly shaped. Eventually, the duckling settled into the duckyard, with the awkward one identified as a drake. The mother duck assured the others of his strength and potential, prompting the old duck to acknowledge their charm. The ducklings adapted to their new home although the awkward one continued to face challenges and ridicule. As the seasons changed and winter set in, the poor duckling endured hardships, swimming in icy water to prevent freezing. One day, the compassionate peasant rescued it from the frozen water and took it home. The duckling faced more challenges in the peasant's household, being misunderstood and causing chaos. Eventually, it found refuge in a garden and discovered its true identity as a swan. The once awkward and despised duckling embraced its newfound beauty and happiness, surrounded by fellow swans and admired by all. Reflecting on its journey, the swan expressed gratitude for the transformation from the ugly duckling to a creature of grace and splendor.